So the context is very important. So also sometimes people think, okay, you know, this government money, do I qualify? Do I not qualify? If I qualify, if I get it, you know, will there be, you know, more adverse uh, impact on me? So that's also a context. It's called the intention, right? So I'll talk about it a bit later. So the context is very important. And then today, you know, we will talk about people, people, there are a lot of clients, uh, they couldn't qualify working with their own CPAs or lawyers, but they come to us and they qualify and they ask why. <laughs> well, that's the why, that's the secret. So the way we work is uh, we work with you and really you are the author of your story and we just assist you and create the story that to help you to qualify, okay? So this is an example of uh, you know, how you tell your story differently. This is a, a chart, your financials, your, your budget, right? Does this tell, your, tell the story clearly? It's alphabetical order, it's in order, but does not really tell the story, right? Now I reorganize it. This tells the story very vividly, right? You have the primary staff, you have consulting staff, resident service, you know, and admin. Okay, now you need you know this is residential drug and alcohol rehab. It makes makes sense. It's very strong, right? So human beings, we make sense of numbers, and that's what you know the story. The, the impact of story actually is huge, as you can tell. So this comes to our approach. So we use a strategic. That's like the story, you know, the big picture, right? And proactive. Um, so when we are we are filing the 941 uh, X, uh, we are backing up everything, have all the documents you know, as if it's going to be uh, audited. And then systems, we want to make sure everything you know systematically it's there. And we also in the process we will try to find your accounting systems if there anything we can improve. You know you may even qualify for IND tax credit and you know, how we can improve the system. To track of it, to keep track of it like that, uh, and then also we make sure you book everything impeccably. You know, you have the PPP, you have the uh, EID alone, you have the some restaurant uh, rescue plan, and you have uh, uh, this uh, ERC, right? So how we make sure we everything book correctly and it's all systematically, it's all clean. Your report is very clean. When you file tax, uh, your tax report is your tax return is very clean. And then you tell the story. So there's, you know, unlike it's less likely that you get audited or anything. Right. And even if you get audited, we have all the backup. So when we talk about a tax or tax refund, whatever we are talking about, uh, I actually uh, created this chart. So there are, uh, you know, multi dimensions. So today I just want to talk about intention. So the intention is. Uh, you know, the government created these policies to help business owners, to help families, to have, help the society and the economy, right? So if we actively take advantage of that uh, and participate in that, we're actually contributing to the society. So it's a good thing, okay? So that's something I wanted to say. It. So I really wanna thank you today, taking the time to learn this and take advantage of it, and that's, uh, helping our community, helping our society, uh, and helping the economy. So with that said, uh, I want to pass on to Michelle. Now, Michelle has been, uh, he's, she has been an EA for over 20 years, and uh, she basically uh, took a lot of time studying this, and uh, we've been doing uh, this work since, uh, I think, April, Michelle, right, from last year. I think uh, we did our first seminar in April, yeah. Yeah, so you know, so she has been doing this and learning this, and then she has been calling the IRS in the past few months. She's been calling the IRS like what two, three hours a day, right? <laughs> a couple <laughs> so, times a week. Yeah. So <laughs> she's yeah, she's not talking about theory, or right? she's talking about uh, real practices. So um, uh, it's uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to uh, listen to her. So Michelle, go ahead. 
Yeah, I think, um, as you all know, there have been a lot of relief programs that have been put out by the government, and this is just one of them. It kind of got put to the side because there was a rule, a rule change, as most of these programs have if you've been using them. And the rule change was that if you had PPP in 2020, you could not take advantage of the ERC or the Employee Retention Tax Credit. And they changed that rule at the very end of 2020, and so we just jumped on it. And I can tell you there's just, there's nothing that's reliable on the internet right now, even on the IRS webpage. This uh, credit is worth a lot of money, and we're seeing refunds of a couple hundred thousand dollars, um, more than that. I don't want to go into too much detail, but it's, the sky's the limit. There's, there's a lot of money in this. Now, um, just like all of these programs, the rules are changing constantly. So we're just chasing the, chasing the landscape of the, of the program. They, um, you know, first came out with the, the form that we use had one worksheet, then it became three, two worksheets. It's up to five worksheets. So just, it's like if you've applied for the EIDL and you're stuck in reconsideration, you have an idea of, of some of the roadblocks we've run into. And I just want to say, be calm. Don't worry. Just if I tell you you're going to get $400,000 refund, you will get it. It's just don't spend it <laughs> until you get it. The, the good rule is just wait till the money's in your hand because sometimes there's a few hiccups in these new programs. The, the IRS sat on them for three or four months and, and the clients are like, where's my money? And I called the IRS and they said, well, we haven't been trained yet on how to process them. So now they're processing them and I'm calling the IRS and we're moving them forward. So Jin Hong, are you promoting? Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to put me forward. I'm already to the changing landscape. <laughs> so anyway, once you get your money, we're gonna do the Snoopy dance together. Just like uh, my other clients, they can't help but call me and say, we got our check today. Here's a picture of it. I'm so excited. So this is a really incredible program. So let me explain to you, there are two ways how you qualify for this program. Uh, we're, we're past that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So there's two different ways to qualify. Um, and you only have to qualify in one way. And I think this is the big misconception that we have had when people go to somebody who's not really studied it. Uh, they think you have to qualify financially. It's only one of the possibilities of two different ways that you can qualify. So this is the first one, and I've made a little chart, and we use 2019 as the base year. So 2019 wages, and if we compare quarter by quarter to 2020, if you had a 50% drop in any one quarter, then you will qualify for at least that quarter for the employee retention credit. Not um, wages, revenue. I'm sorry, did I say wages? Yeah. Thank, thank you for the correction. Yes, for the gross, re the gross receipts. So gross receipts went down by 50% in any one quarter. In 2021, that rule changed, and it only has to be a 20% reduction in gross receipts compared to 2019. Again, 2019 is the base year. That's before COVID, so we're using that as the base. So only a 20% reduction in gross receipts per quarter in 2021 compared to 2019. Now, this program, they changed again. It now goes through September of 2021, so through third quarter of 2021. It started March 13th in 2020. So the other way where most of the people are qualifying, and this is where a lot of the confusion goes, is what it, is they had a partial suspension. And this is where we really dig and um, have a long conversation with you about how your business runs, what your story is, and what changed due to COVID. So the rule is that if there was a state, local, or other authority that had a law, that basically created a nominal uh, suspension of your business, then you would qualify. And I wanna give you a couple of, of examples um, so that you have an idea what I'm talking about. So we, we've had, say for example, gas stations and these gas stations had practically uh, a restaurant within their little convenience store. So. So that restaurant had hot food that was self-service and 
drinks and coffee and it comprised about 10% of their business. And because that was shut down by the county health department, that qualifies them. So we have had, um, say, construction. Construction workers had to get permits and the city was halfway closed down. And, and we all know it was the first few months of the year that, that they had a stay at home order. So if you were non-essential, you went home. But after that, then Newsom came out with the blueprint for a safer economy for California. And those rules were pretty specific about how many people could gather together in a room and you had to maintain social distancing. So we tie your story back to what those rules were and to see if you qualify. So uh, we look at that law and if for instance, your office, you could not maintain six foot social distancing and the, some of that work has to be done in your office, you would likely qualify. Almost every nonprofit will qualify and that is because Nonprofits make their money by uh, holding fundraisers and the conventions were, were reduced to only having 25% occupancy at one point due to the law, the blueprint of the safer economy law. And that went up gradually to 75%. And then as of June 15th, they went back into 100% occupancy. So for California, we pretty much have, uh, if you fall into the rules, from March the 19th, when Newsom's Blueprint for a Safer Economy went into effect until June the 14th. So there are many instances where I really go deeply into your business and how it functions and what, what changed. If you're a manufacturer and you couldn't get your parts due to some restriction, and even if you could maintain the six foot distancing, but you couldn't get your parts, then that qualifies. So my first, the first thing I do with the people who are who I speak to to get the employee retention credit, is, is I start asking their story. Well, what happened? And sometimes it takes twenty minutes, and then we hit on something. We go like, okay, explain that to me. Talk to me like I'm a kindergartner. Explain how your business functions, and we find that part of your story that qualifies you. And I make a whole narrative, like Jin Hong said. We, we write this whole story down and tie it back to whatever law applies. Some attorney, for example, I had an attorney group, their niche was required them to meet with clients who were in jail. And the Supreme Court Justice of California kept uh, closing the jails due to COVID. And they completely qualified because they could not meet with their clients. So there are many angles from different businesses. Even if you pivoted your business into some other product that made you money. If you had to, we're looking again at 2019 as your base year. If 2019 you were doing a certain product and you could not do it anymore for one of, due to one of these rules, then you will qualify for this credit. So then the real question is how much, oh, I wanted to say again, I just, I, I don't know. I get so many questions on this. You do not have to qualify financially. It's one or the other one or the other. So if you qualify by a partial suspension and you've made even more money in 2021 than you did in 2019, you still can qualify just one way or the other. So how much money is it? This is what we really want to know, right? So in 2020, uh, the maximum credit that you can get, and when we say credit, let me clarify that, you get a check back to your company mailed by the US Treasury, you get a check. So it's not just a credit, you get a check back. So the credit you get back, it's 50% of wages up to $1,000, $10,000 per, per employee per year. So for all of 2020, one employee, if they made $10,000, you get $5,000 back for each employee. So you can see how quickly the, the dollars add up. If you had 10 employees making $10,000, you get a $50,000 check back. And if you had 100 employees, it'd be 500,000. Now in 2021, it went way up. So the credit allowed is 70%, and now we're going per quarter. So in 2020, it was per year. Now 2021, it, the percentage went up to 70% of $10,000 per employee per quarter. And what that translates to is now $7,000 potentially per employee. And so if you had 
10 employees, then that's $210,000. So it really, uh, it, it's a large amount of money that you have the potential to make. Now there so are rules- We're talking about per quarter, $7,000 per quarter. Per quarter, per yeah. employee. I'm glad I have somebody back there who's listening to me. <laughs> Thank you, Jinang. Um, yes, this is per quarter. So, so that would be 210,000 per quarter if you had 10 employees. So we have almost two quarters if you're, going, if you're in California and you're qualifying by the partial suspension, you would have $210,000 approximately. There are a lot of rules. Now, the thing is in 2020, there's a rule about the number of employees. They, you can only have um, up to 100 full-time employees to qualify. And that changes in 2021 to up to 250 full-time employees. Now we have other, uh, oh yes, you want to talk about what kind of wages. The wages are defined differently than they are for PPP wages. If the employer paid the health insurance, then that qualifies. We cannot double dip. So uh, we can't use PPP wages. We do a whole spreadsheet. We subtract those out. Um, we can't use accrued sick leave and vacation pay only if it was accrued prior to the period that you qualify. And there's a rule about the relative. So if you're a shareholder that's a majority shareholder, your wages cannot be used for the employee retention tax credit. However, their strategy that we use in this program to get the most out of it for you. And what that means is we'll, we'll take all the relatives who don't qualify, their, whose wages do not qualify for the employee retention credit, and we'll use those wages instead for PPP forgiveness. I'm gonna pick and choose exactly what's gonna get the biggest dollar amount back for you for the employee retention credit. All of these programs, um, interact. So you have to be aware of them. Uh, the PPP forgiveness, uh, the FFCRA, which is that's the sick leave wages you got if somebody was out on, on COVID, there was a credit available, R&D credit, you just basically you can't double dip. And that's why we now have five pages of worksheets that go with the form, which is to, to make sure that we're not um, taking using the wrong wages, but we, we calculate this all on a spreadsheet and we save all of that uh, information. None of that goes to the IRS. Your narrative doesn't go to the IRS. What goes to the, to the IRS is simply an amended payroll tax form. It's a standard tax form that goes to the IRS. We keep all the other documentation. Yeah, this is another secret why we are able to get more money than um, other uh, firms. Um, you know, we try to strategize the PPP, the ERC, the R&D tax, and the family leave, all of these. Uh, so uh, one thought, if you have not applied for the PPP forgiveness, uh, do not do it. Let us do it together. So we know, you know, which way do we can use for PPP forgiveness, and which way do we can use for ERC uh, to get the maximum benefit. Yeah, and that's a really important point that you brought up, Jin Hong, which is um, I tell people, please don't apply <laughs> till you talk to me, or at least remember, there's only two options on the timing. You can choose eight weeks or you can choose 24 weeks. Always choose the 24 weeks because it just gives me a much bigger time period where I can pick and choose which wages are used for, for which program. And somebody who did one of these wrong, everybody's doing the form wrong, let's just say that, but I'm just shake my head and go, that was $50,000 you threw away and we cannot amend that forgiveness form. So just keep that in mind. If you wanna do this program, please contact me or a simple email or call and then we'll be sure that you do it properly. Yeah, and that flexibility makes a huge difference because remember, um, for the ERC, we have to put on a timeline where you know there's an order to close for you know closing businesses, right? So we are kind of constrained by these timelines. Um, so the PPP has more flexibility. That's why we can move around. Right, and exactly, and I can give an example of that, which is that, um, for example, if you got your second PPP and you got it on March the fifteenth. If you have 20, if you put in 24 weeks, you essentially have 
till September the 15th to use the wages for PPP forgiveness. However, in California, if you're qualifying by the blueprint for a safer economy, the ERC wages end June the 14th. So I'm gonna use all the wages up to June 14th for ERC. And then the wages from June the 15th to September the 15th, I'll use for PPP forgiveness when the ERC is no longer available. So it's really essential that we do this to get the most out of the program. And there's nothing wrong with this. It's just, you're allowed to pick and choose. So let's pick and choose the way that gets you the most money. So, so thank Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Michelle, for uh, presenting this to us. And uh, uh, later on, we will open questions. But I want to talk about, uh, you know, we want to find a good fit to work with you. So I'm just going to tell you how we work and see if we're a good fit. Um, so first, we are technology driven. You know, we use Dropbox. We are completely virtual. Um, use Zoom meetings. Uh, um, so uh, you want to make sure you know you're comfortable with that. And then our prices pricing is a, you know, pretty good compared to. Um, we really don't compare to you know competitors. Uh, we work with everybody in partnership. You know, we work with our CPA lawyers in partnership, and we we will we believe you know whatever we charge, we create enough value. So I just want to speak out right here. We charge two thousand dollar upfront engagement fee to get started, and then when we complete the nine forty one we will charge you the rest of completion fee up to 15% of the credit claimed, okay? And that's $2,000 included that, okay? So 15% of the credit claimed, okay? So that's something we choose. And now it's important that that money is due before we give you the 941, okay? You have to pay that money. X. Remember it's 941X. <laughs> Yeah, 941X. You need to pay that money before 941X, okay? Uh, we've, bef before, you know, we um, also just want to clarify some of you may get here because your friends told you, your colleague told me before we were charging 10%, but now it's 15%, okay? So that is just, you know, we have made the decision to do that. So also before we kind of, you know, we tell people 10%, uh, at completion and sometimes people pay, sometimes people don't pay. And we don't like that, <laughs> you know, we want to work with people, you know, you trust us, you honor, honor us and because we don't want to waste the time. You know, we don't have admin people, you know, chasing people or tracking this and that, okay? So we want to make sure you are comfortable with that. And if you are really not comfortable, you know, check our references, you know, our kinds of receiving money. So, uh, you know, we, we stand behind our work, okay? And then our work, you know, the IS most likely they adjust, uh, they accept. And if they adjust, we have backup. Usually they accept our uh, our claim. Okay. So you know, in a rare case, if they adjust, we will adjust the fee. We'll refund you if they adjust low. Okay. And if they adjust the high, you know, we usually don't ask for more. <laughs> so that's something we just want to keep it simple. You know, where we believe in empowerment, believe in trusting, and believe in. Uh, spending the time um, productively, okay? And then we really create a true partnership with you. You know, this is, you are the author of your story, right? So you understand. So we are really listening to you and we asking questions and, uh, and you just keep talking freely and we will find some nuggets. Like, oh, this one, we can expand it. Uh, so work with us as we listen to you. You know, you trust us and tell us everything, and then we will catch the nuggets and we will document it. And then the way we do it, we document everything. As I said before, we document everything as if we will be audited. Okay. Now, most likely, because we did the work and the story makes sense, most likely uh, we will not be audited. In the rare case, if we get audited, we have other documents to support. So with that said, thank you for listening. And if you are interested to work with us, uh, email Michelle, uh, call Michelle, and um, 
if Michelle does not respond, you can call me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but best to just talk to Michelle, okay? Uh, you know, uh, unless you, you're mad with Michelle. <laughs> it's faster, and I promise you, Michelle responds faster than I do, okay? <laughs> Yeah. So, and then also, you know, this, we also look at the whole picture strategically. So if you have a, a topics you want to talk to me, you know, other than um, uh, ERC, uh, you can go to this website and book a time with me. Uh, I'm very good at responding to uh, my calendar. Okay. But emails, uh, phone calls, um, if, if you are new to me, your phone call would not even ring. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I have to manage my time. So, um, yeah. So, thank you. And uh, now I want to open uh, for uh, questions. So, you feel free to unmute yourself if you have questions. Yes, I'll send you the recording. Yeah, I'll send you the recording. Did we speak about the aggregation? I don't think we spoke about the aggregation on the ERC. No, why don't you? Okay, so I'll speak a little bit about that. We mm -hmm. have clients who have maybe five or six companies. So if you are, are a majority shareholder and say five different companies and one of the companies, let's say it's a restaurant, almost every restaurant's going to qualify, right? Because they were really restri restricted and had to put the tables far apart. So one, let's say one of their businesses qualifies through a partial suspension, but their majority shareholder in five companies, that one company now makes all five of the companies qualify. That's how the aggregation rules work on the partial suspension. And oddly, the uh, aggregation rules you have to use for the financial qualifier are that you have to add up the gross receipts of all the companies that you're a majority shareholder in to qualify financially. So it's very beneficial to use the partial suspension qualifier if you are a majority shareholder in a number of the companies. It's also this, the aggregation rules also apply to the number of, empl of employees because there's a limitation if you have over 250 employees. I think I mentioned this for 2021 then you won't qualify. And in 2020, it cannot be over 100 employees. And this is aggregated with all the companies in which you are, are a majority shareholder. Michelle, I have a question. Sure. The credit that the uh, ERC generates, is that based on the credit available? In other words, the check we get back, or is it only uh, a refund of taxes paid. It's a check. And actually, this is a good point that you brought up because if you are familiar with the 941X, you have the option to check the box to apply the credit towards future uh, 941 taxes payable or payroll taxes payable. You have that option. But most people just want to get the check back. So we just check the claim box and then you get a check. So let me just make sure I clarify this. So if we have not actually had to pay taxes in that amount, we would still get a check based on the credit. Is yes. that correct? Okay. Yes, you would get a check. Thank you so much. Hi, Michelle. I'd like to ask a question. So if our clinic has been reduced, the, the international customer numbers and also the uh, the income of international customers, but our like the total income didn't get up in affected. So in this case, do we qualify for uh, the requirement? So are you saying that the company is an international company, or that the income, your some of some of your gross receipts is from an international company? Uh, so our company is a local company, but because of travel ban, our international cost com co customers has been, the numbers has been reduced. So your gross receipts are reduced? No. So our gross receipt is not reduced, but only the, uh, the income from the international customers has been reduced. 
Okay. This is one of these things where you and I need to talk for like 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. And I need to dig a little deeper yeah. to understand the whole thing and how it okay. works. Okay. Okay. Sometimes Sounds it good. takes me 20 minutes to get into the real, like Jin Hong called it, the nugget. Uh -huh. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Michelle, here are some questions. Uh, can you talk about uh, how part-time employees are counted in this? Yes, uh, um, there's two parts to that as part-time employees. As long as you qualify for um, by number of full-time employees. In other words, you are under 100 employees. I'm going to assume that's part of the question. You're under 100 employees in 2020, under 250 full-time employees in 2021 then anybody who's part-time, you get that percentage of. So in 2020, let's say you had a part-time employee and they made $7,000, you get 50% of that back in a refund. So all employees are included in this. You would get 70% of the part-time employees in, in the first quarter of 2021 and 70% of their wages through June 14th if a partial suspension qualification. So part-time employees, are they their wages are available for the employee retention tax credit? Yes. What if one of my companies is in Colorado? <laughs> Isn't that funny? I was just thinking that question today because we have uh, a few companies that are multi state, and I have not read any rules specifically on how to handle that situation. So what I've been doing is just assuming with the aggregation rules that if the majority of the company is in one state, I'm just going to use that state. I've not found anything that specifies what to do. How long does it take for the IRS to get the 941X process <laughs> and the refund check to be issued? And that is the million dollar question. Um, so we don't know for sure what's how long it's going to take for the ones that are being sent in now the people that we sent in in july of 2021 are getting their checks but you have to remember at that time the irs had not yet been training their agents on how to process them so they sat there for three or four months and were not processed so we're hoping that's speeding up because they've been trained now I've been speaking to them on the phone regularly, as you know, and we're hoping it's going to take a couple of months, but I can't, again, I can't guarantee that. What if we already applied for PPP forgiveness? Um, then we have to use what you did. And I will ask you for a particular form, which is the 3508. And that is how you applied for forgiveness. And if you used 100% wages, then I have to do that on your, there, those wages are just not available for ERC. But if you made a mistake on the form, which most people do, then I will have a conversation with you on how we're gonna handle it. It's a little bit of an odd situation that the banks are accepting them, but I'm seeing a lot of PPP forgiveness forms where they put four months as the PPP period and there's no such option. So I have a conversation with the client and I say to me, if you put in four months, I'm I would say that was never legally an option. So I'm going to, uh, let's use 24 weeks. It's a little bit gray, but I think it's acceptable, but there's no amending your PPP forgiveness. What if my physical location is California, but my LLC is registered in Delaware? Um, if you're filing in California and your workers are California wages, again, this is based on your wages. So if it's California wages, then I would file California. Go by the rules in California. What if travel restrictions prevented my company from taking contracts in Hawaii? Uh, yes, travel is one of the, the, the way that the law is written is that if due to state, local, laws or uh, appropriate authority, uh, your restriction was travel, meetings or commerce, then you would qualify. So the only thing is just the that we want the law that that restricted that. 
So it may be more that you couldn't meet in person when you went to Hawaii, uh, that you couldn't keep six feet social distancing. What was happening when you went to Hawaii? What kind of group meeting was that? That it was probably disallowed. And I would probably look a little bit into Hawaii rules on that case if that's if that's uh, a state that you regularly went to. Michelle, I have a question in regards to the calculation for the change in gross receipts. If you're looking at your base year for 2019, are you just comparing quarter one to quarter um, of 2020 and 2021 to quarter one of 2019 and so forth? Or can you look at it by the different quarters and how it reflects? Like, you know, if you were expecting growth in 2019, for instance, and your Q4 is higher, so you're hoping that your Q1 in 2020 would be higher than your 2019, but there is a drop, would you be comparing it that way? The way that it's compared is first quarter 2020 is compared to first quarter 2019, second quarter 2020 is compared to second quarter 2019, third quarter 2020 is compared to third quarter 2019. And Got then it. like that. And then in, in 2021, it's first quarter 2021 compared to first quarter 2019. Got There's it. one exception rule where you have the option for the fourth quarter 2020 to compare it to the first quarter 2021. That's the one exception. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and then, you know, again, I come back to the beginning context, right? It, it's your story. It's malleable. Even the number is malleable, right? How you book revenue, you know, how you call it. You can call cost of goods sold, or you can call revenue, right? You can just reduce your revenue. Um, and uh, you could, uh, you know, if this is something happened in the 30s or the 20, uh, 29th, you know, we could put it into this month or we could into put it into that month, right? There's some flexibilities we can, uh, we can, we can have some, some leeways uh, if there's you know a little differences, right? We can we can have this kind of a, um, uh, modification for your financial statements, you know, in your bookkeeping strategy. That's why we we always say um, strategic and proactive, right? <laughs> Systematic. You know, that's why um, we actually have an approach of engaging clients proactively, and we want to look at uh, um, your financials uh, on a monthly basis. So we know, you know, how we book it that will help you. Uh, in many cases, like this is another case. Uh, this is one case, but there are in many cases. You know, you may qualify for, like, for example, for your uh, for the IND tax credit. You have to be, you know, five years startup, uh, um, and your revenue has to be within five million dollar. And uh, in this way, you know, if you have this year five point one million dollar, okay. Uh, you know, can we put this hundred thousand dollar into like a contra revenue, right? Uh, there, there's some cost we can say contra revenue. So your revenue is for fall within that uh, um, threshold. I think somebody asked where can they get their three five zero eight form because that's specifically the one I like to see. And usually, if you go into your, if you don't have it saved. Uh, you can either ask the bank where you got your loan forgiven or log back into the portal if you had a portal and see if there's documents there because that's the main document is it's called the application for forgiveness. Uh, if you want to know what it looks like just do a search do a Google search for uh, SBA form 3508 and you will see it and so that you know what it looks like and then um, try to find that form. What if I started my company on September 30, 2021? Um, then you won't qualify. So it has to be um, uh, in, this, in this in 2019. Well, there has to be wages. So now remember that this credit is, is rewarding you for employing, uh, for having employees. So if there are no wages prior to September 30th, 2021, then you have nothing to take a credit on. So this, this ERC at originally 
was ending at the end of 2021, but it ends now September 30th, 2021. And that means you wouldn't, if you just started your business September 30th, 2021, you wouldn't have any wages or anything to compare to either. If we already applied for ERC based on decreased revenues in certain quarters, can we apply for additional quarters based on partial suspension? Yes, absolutely. Well, feel free to unmute yourself. Would this also qualify if it's wages for, let's say, if you're if you have a small company where there's only yourself, or well, if you're, I guess, if you have a small individual company and your revenues have gone down significantly, and you pay yourself once a year, would you still be able to qualify for the ERC against your own wages? If you are the majority shareholder, no. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, listen to get yourself trained. So um, feel free to email us or call us if you have additional questions. And if you want to engage with us, um, talk to Michelle and, uh, uh, and she will do a kind of pre-qualification, make sure uh, you qualify uh, based on our um, you know, quick glance uh, of your financials and your situations, and then you know, we'll engage with you. So thank you. Uh, Jin Hong, there was an ask for the contact information slide. Oh, okay. There we go. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, I muted my video. <laughs>